Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden and today we're going to be looking into the story of Morton Eigeltinger. And uh, in case you might say, hey, that's a bit of an interesting name, um, this is a man who was born and raised in Norway and came to the United States uh, about 30 years ago in his mid-20s. Um, a man who has a very good education um, and from the photos I've seen that he's taken a very good eye. He is a photographer. He also helped manage a local farm. And here is a picture of Morton. And if you look at the Google search results here for images, you'll see that there's really only a few different photos of him. And then it goes off into all kinds of other stuff. And that was part of the challenge in researching this case. There's just not a lot of media about him. Luckily, his story has hit certain headline um, news attention in the local area. So we are going to be able to um, chase down some details from some of those articles. But I actually heard about Morton from a former co-worker of his. Apparently the photography studio that he was working at when he went missing, um, she had worked with him there. And there was something about the email that she sent to me. Um, it was just very, uh, not desperate, but it was very personable and she was really speaking highly of his character and what a nice person he was. Now, I don't have her permission um, to use her name, so I'm not going to use her name. But when I did start searching online, I did find a few similar posts that had the same kind of sentiment. Here's one from a Facebook account for Shakisha Michelle Caitlin. My dear friend Mort Morton Eigeltinger took this picture. It has, in, it has appeared in so many publications. My friend Morton has been missing. No idea what happened to him. He was my first photographer to capture the most beautiful pictures of me. Please keep his family in prayer. Hashtag Morton, we miss you. And I actually did some searching. I did some searches for Morton's name on Twitter as well. And there are a few results there. Once again, people just calling out that this man was very special and that they miss him. Uh, in one tweet in particular, I reached out to that person because they seem to be a family member. I thought maybe they would have additional details for the video. Um, it appears that I think it was a cousin of his that is not in the U.S. here. So she didn't have a lot of information, but she did forward me to the um, sergeant that is in charge of the investigation. I did a little email contact with the sergeant there, um, and he was actually friendly enough to reply. So just to let you know, I've kind of tried to look into this case from a few different ways outside of the normal searching for information, because when I went searching online, uh, there just wasn't a whole lot. As a matter of fact, I can't even find a missing persons poster for Morton, um, and I couldn't find a profile for him on many of the usual websites, you know, Charlie Project and, and those kind of websites, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Hopefully I helped rectify that situation a little bit. Um, but let's continue here. So to start getting the details of this case, we're actually going to do things a little different and start at websleuths.com for this one. You can see Lost 2188 posted on October 22nd, uh, 2015. Morton Eigeltinger, 56, Manass Park, 8th of September, 2015. And here's a picture, a different picture of Morton here. Sheriff's Office offering reward for information on missing man. It's been a little over six weeks since a missing photographer was last seen at a Manassas State Park Sheets, and now the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office is offering a reward for information that leads to his whereabouts. Deputies were first informed about the disappearance of Morton Eigeltinger, 56, after he did not show up to his 1 p.m. appointment to take photos at a school in Prince William County, Virginia, on September 9th. And that's one of the details I got from his former co-worker. Apparently this was a multi-day shoot and typically they would set things up and then just leave them set up overnight. And from what I understand, he did appear there on the first day and then it was either on the second or third day that he was supposed to come back that he went missing. Um, Sheets is a gas station, I guess, on the East Coast. I don't think we really have them here on the West Coast. Um, investigators said that the last confirmed sighting of Eigeltinger was in his green 2012 Ford F-150 at a Sheets gas station on September 8th at 7.50 p.m. And then they have a link to the news report here. Um, so just rolling along, Jersey Girl added some information. About a week after, on September 14th, his vehicle was spotted on John Rissler Road about a mile away from his home. 
On that day, the sheriff's office conducted an extensive search for Eigeltinger that involved cadaver dogs, helicopters, and boats searching the banks of the Shenandoah River. Apparently, this road runs very close to the Shenandoah River. Um, but they didn't find him or any of his personal belongings. Investigators also noted there was no damage to Eigeltinger's vehicle when it was recovered. And he helps run the Rainbow Hill Farm near Charlestown on top of being a professional photographer. Once again, they talk about the reward. And here we finally start getting some vital statistics. He is described as a white male with salt and pepper hair. He weighs around 155 pounds and is approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall. And as you guys know, on this show, I love to cover the vital statistics right off the top, and that's why I was hoping to find a missing persons poster or some type of database entry somewhere, and it just isn't out there. So here is one article from the Shepherdstown Chronicle, Sheriff Calls for Public's Help in Search for Missing Man. Um, essentially, it's, this is uh, over a month after he's missing, and it's just saying they're kind of running out of options, they're running out of leads, and they're really calling to the community to help them uh, try to figure this out. It also mentions that his sister, uh, Anne Lees Eilert Olsen, traveled from Norway. Um, she spoke at Wednesday's press conference. Here's a comment or two from her. He is my only brother, and I'm very fond of him. Our family, friends, and myself are very worried that something serious happened to him. My brother was, is, a survivor. He would never just leave or take his own life. I need to find him. I beg anyone with information to come forward and contact the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Um, the sheriff, a uh, representative from the Sheriff's Department, Doherty, uh, under the leadership of Sergeant Holtz, who Sergeant Holtz is actually who I contacted, um, says, some people know something, even in passing, if someone had a conversation with him and he mentioned a disagreement he was having with, some, with someone, uh, that information could be helpful. We are committed to finding a resolution to this case and finding Morton. And down here they have contact information. Um, people are encouraged to call the Sheriff's Office, 304-728-3205. As usual, I will have all the contact information I have in the description box below. So if you have any information about Morton, you can forward it to the appropriate people. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat hopeful about this case. This is a very recent case. This is within six months. There is a possibility, as they're alluding to here, that he might have had a disagreement with someone. Maybe he is voluntarily um, missing. Maybe he has decided to try to leave this part of his life for some reason. Um, that being said, they did look into his credit cards, uh, his accounts, his cell phone, and apparently none of those services have been used since he has gone missing. Um, though it is worth noting, they haven't found any of those personal items either, uh, including when they did search the Shenandoah River. They have not found any of those personal effects. So there seems to be a lot of uh, his personal items still out there. And until we find those, um, I think we have a good chance of finding Morton, uh, maybe hiding out somewhere. The person that contacted me did send me some rumored information. Um, I don't want to really report on that, of course, because I can't really back it with anything, but just know that I did submit that to the Sheriff's Department. Um, I also noticed a, a bit of a weird thing on, in terms of Twitter when I was searching for him. It looked like he may have had a Twitter account at some point, but he doesn't have one any longer. I did a little research on Twitter, and apparently only Twitter accounts can be removed uh, if family members contact Twitter and provide a death certificate, and I'm certain there is no death certificate in this case since he is in missing person status. So if he did have a Twitter account, I'm not quite sure how that disappeared or why. Um, so, you know, basically those few pieces of information that I thought might lead to something I forwarded to the Sheriff's Department. Um, finally, I went to NAMIS, which is the um, National Missing and Unidentified Person System. This is the national database for missing people. And I was very, very surprised when I came here and I searched on Morton Eigeltinger and I could not find a profile for him. Um, that is probably the first time I've had that happen where I couldn't find a profile on someone. So I was very curious about how they get entered. Um, is I don't know if if sheriff's departments and um, law enforcement, I don't know if they have automated processes that kick in to get people entered into a database like this, but for some reason, Morton didn't hit this database. 
Uh, I looked more into what it takes to submit someone to this database and anyone can do it. You, ba you basically just have to say that you're a concerned citizen. You have to provide enough information, uh, mainly the basics, like I mentioned, height, weight, age, um, color of his hair, photos if you have any. Um, I also included a copy of the press release that the uh, Sheriff's Department had kicked out and I've added as much information as I could find on Morton um, and created my own profile and submitted it to NAMIS. And now it goes through a process where if you're able to complete the profile enough, they will forward it to a case investigator on their side. I believe they do more work to try to get the data firmed up, for example, trying to get dental records and um, DNA records and things of, of that nature that are a bit more intensive than just a, a citizen can get. But for anyone out there that might be facing a case where a family member is missing, or um, if you just have a case where you're interested in a missing person and you think that you're not getting all eyes possible on them, particularly if you're not finding missing people posters, um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you come to findthemissing.org Go ahead and sign yourself up for an account, submit that information, gather all the information you can. Um, I thought it was very cool that I was basically able to start this whole process off just with information that I had gotten from the separate news reports and the press release from the Sheriff's Department. It doesn't take a ton of information to get this record to the point where the case reviewer will take it on. I kind of have to scratch my head just thinking what would happen if you know, this guy showed up somewhere or they found his ID and they came looking at this database and they didn't see him registered as a missing person. Um, so that is what I've got on Morton. Um, if you have anyone in the Virginia area, um, West Virginia, DC, uh, any area around there where Morton might have gone off to, um, possibly to hide from something, start a new life of some kind, please, please, please send them a link to this video. Please help us get this information out because I can tell you from my searches there are a small handful of people that really didn't have a big social media pull but tried their best to get some people looking into this case. Just It's, it's going to take someone that's an average citizen I think at this point to hopefully forward some new information to the sheriffs that they don't already have and maybe give them the tools they need to do some more work in this case. Um, so the more people that we get this exposed to, I think the better chance we have of Morton's sister finally hearing uh, what happened to her brother and maybe we can get that uh, awesome photographer back into his life and uh, around all those people that seem to care about him so much. So. Um, before we go, I also wanted to cover a different case, how Edgar Latulip solved the 30-year mystery of his own disappearance. And just know when I go looking for cases when I'm doing Searchlight, I will regularly do some news searches, kind of see what's going on currently. And there is a good trend that I see of cases that are solved. And when missing persons cases are solved, they seem to be solved relatively quickly. Someone takes a trip somewhere, uh, they go missing, a week later they're found, uh, a few weeks later they're found. You can find a lot of um, stories, particularly on Twitter, I think because it's such a fast medium. Um, you can find a lot of tweets where someone's missing and then all of a sudden a day or two later they are found. So know that in a lot of these cases the people are actually found. Um, however, as time goes on, I think some of us start to worry about that. And this is an awesome case because this is a 30-year-old missing persons case. Uh, this is a composite drawing. Let's see here. For 30 years, and this is from smh.com.au, but uh, if you search on Edgar Latulip, you can see there are many publications that have covered this story uh, at this point over the past month. For 30 years, Edgar Latulip didn't remember his own name or realize he was living 130 kilometers from home where they were competing theories about how and where he had most likely died. No one had seen him since September 1986 when, according to local news accounts, Latulip disappeared from a Canadian group home, jumped on a bus bound for the south side of Lake Ontario, and forgot almost everything. Authorities had once said Latulip was developmentally delayed and had mental health challenges. His mother had said her adult son, who was 21 when he disappeared, functioned at the level of a child. 
The last time his mother saw him, Latulip was in the hospital recovering from a suicide attempt. He abandoned the group home in Kitchener and police say headed for Niagara Falls, a common suicide site. In a especially troubling sign, he had left the residence without his medication. Soon after, police say Latulip suffered a head injury and lost his memory. But police said he started having flashbacks last month and remembered his real name, Edgar Latulip. He told a social worker who discovered that he was a missing person and contacted local authorities. After a voluntary DNA exam, police were able to confirm his identity. And yes, that is 30 years after this guy went missing. And it's one of those horrible cases where he's got some disorders he's dealing with. Um, you don't know what type of things could happen to him in this world if he goes out into the open. He does. He apparently builds a whole new life for himself, not really knowing who he was. And then all of a sudden the miracle of those memories starts happening to him. Um, now, I did look for more information. I don't think he has, as at least as of when these articles were written, he hadn't reconnected with his mother yet, but they were planning on doing so. Um, but just to put a little sprinkle of hope at the end of this episode, just know in my research, I see a lot of solved cases. And even this one, um, is it's, it's up there for being 30 years, but there are cases that are solved even after that. So please, if you're ever helping someone... Uh, deal with this. Don't ever give up hope. These things, these miracles really do happen. People can be found and returned home. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Searchlight. Um, I really can't do it without you guys. And once again, I ask for Morton Eigeltinger, please share this information, uh, get it out there. Let's raise some exposure to his case because it is fading into the ethos of the internet extremely quickly. Uh, major media did all their reporting on it and you know how they are they've kind of waved off of it now i hope you're all having an excellent day take care of each other and i'll see you next time